Thank you. Thank you. Is this my seat? Hi, friends. How is everyone doing? Y'all got on that bed. Listen, and I forgot my megaphone. I'm so mad. But y'all know I was trying to not run late, right? But I said Mary is going to be mad at me. But shout out to all the get out the bed friends. Okay. How's everybody feeling? Everybody feel good? Y'all can see, everybody can see me? Is it giving? Okay. Is it giving? Okay. Make sure y'all get the good angles, okay? And tag Peloton so we can do it again, all right? <laughs> okay, so I really sat and I thought, since I knew this was happening, what am I going to tell these people? And I thought it was going to be like, oh, Peloton just wants to have people in the store to try out equipment. I'm going to just go in there and, you know, get on the mic and say a little one, two, three. And it was like, oh, no, like, what do you want to do? And I was like, girl, I don't know. <laughs> Is this all about me? So it slowly started to shape up into all of this. And then when they told me on the phone how many people, I think the original number was like 75. And I was like... I looked on the phone, I said, well, Lord, I hope I can get 30. Uh, but then in four hours, it was at 71 people. And I said, oh, the friends are showing out. So I just wanted to start um, by saying thank you to all of you because it, is, because it is because of all of you that I get these amazing opportunities like this to sit and speak with you. I was telling someone backstage that I was nervous and she said, well, I don't know why because people are coming to see you for just who you are. So it's not something you have to put on, turn on, turn off. And I said, wow, you're right. They came to see me, baby. So I'm gonna just let it do what it do. So I'm not gonna sit and talk too long about my journey, but when I started reflecting on what exactly it was that I wanted to talk about, I think it was very imperative for me to share how I got here. And I think people see the here, but they don't know where I came from. And I think may, a lot of people maybe know bits and pieces, but they don't know the nitty gritty. So I want to share the nitty gritty today. So y'all might laugh a little bit. Y'all might cry a little bit. So I hope y'all got on y'all waterproof liners and things. Because uh, I want to really tell the story. Is that all right? Okay. All right. Whoo, Jesus. So I wanted to name this Dreaming Bid because I have huge dreams and you all are a part of one right now and i think that is so amazing because to be aligned with a fitness brand not being a standard size is an amazing feat for anyone um but getting here was not easy and so we're going to start from the beginning i grew up in a small town called shorterville alabama we got a post office and we got a corner store i used to go and get hot dogs and put a little bit of chili on the hot dog because if you wait too long it's gonna get soggy and that was so important to me so still to this day when i go home i still have to get one of those chili dogs but the post office ain't even open no more so it's just a testament of what type of town i grew up in i had to drive 10 minutes to go to school my graduating class was 70 people and most people don't leave the town it's very rare that people go off and do all these big things. But I remember being so young and I would sit in front of my floor model TV with my mom and dad. And I would be like, I want to be on TV. Like, I like that. How do I get that? And my mom was like, well, baby, I don't know what to tell you because we not close to none of that. But I think you can do it if you just keep trying. And I was like, well, baby, that ain't helping me at all, honey. Can we move to Atlanta or something? Where is the, where is, where is all these places? Universal Studios, like Florida, let's move. And she was like, baby, we not moving. Mama got a good job. And I was like, all right, girl, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you ride with that. But I think I went through a lot to get here because life was not easy because at five years old, my dad passed away. And I remember that morning very clearly because I was getting ready to go to school and I started crying because I was like, why are you going to the hospital? And my mom was like, oh, it's gonna be fine. He's just going to get a check. It's fine, like he's gonna come home. I got back from school that day and he was not at home. He had a heart attack while he was at the hospital. And I remember saying to myself, like, I, I remember this as a 30 year old man right now, being five and saying, I remember 
not having a good feeling about him going to that doctor. And that stuck with me, but in my head, I was like, okay, well, I still got my mama, like, I'm, she loves me enough, and it's gonna be okay. And so I had a great childhood today. If you ever want to know what my mom was like, she was me times 10. Over the top, kept her nails done, loved going shopping, all the things that I love to do now, I literally am her walking. And I keep me single day because most days I feel like I don't know what's going on, but I know she is still like walking here with me. Um, so I had an amazing childhood. I was in the band. I sang. Always the life of the party. I always cared about my outfits. I remember the first day my mama let me dress myself. I was in like sixth grade and baby, I had on some cream little pants. <laughs> and I said, that's why I'm going to wear some cream pants today because that's the first one, two I put together. <laughs> and I got to school and them boys pushed me down in that mud and my cream pants was never cream again. Yeah, oh, don't feel bad. I got up and beat them boys up, baby. Don't eat it. Uh uh. And I was not even a fighter. Do you understand what I'm saying? But y'all messed up pants y'all could have pushed me down and i would be fine but not the cream no. so i'm just letting y'all know if anybody want to put me down today i am body baby um but no i said all that to say like i she i never felt that anything i wanted to do was not in reach i never had the resources i never knew what was going on but anything i ever wanted to do i wanted to play the trumpet i wanted to go to band camp i wanted to do all these big things and she was just like okay well as long as you try you can do it and so to be met with such tragedy at 14 years old waking up one morning i went to school every day and i told my mama bye I was my bedroom. We had a trailer, a double wide trailer. I slept on one end. She slept on the other end because she said she didn't want to be bothered with me and all of that. So I would stop midway every single morning and I would scream out. I would be like, Mama, I'm gone. And she would be like, All right, love you. Be safe. Bye. And the night before, we had gotten into an argument about the dishes, baby. And it went down. I was like, Girl, I don't even know why you would get me up out the bed just to wash a plate. I was pissed. <laughs> So when we used to get into it real, real bad, I would, I would be like, all right, mama, I'm gone. And she would be mad. And I would have to go up there and be like, mama, I'm gone. And she'd be like, all right, give me a kiss. And that would be our way of making up. So I'm thinking that morning was one of those mornings. And it was not. I kept calling her. I went up there and I was like, mama, like, stop playing. Like, this is, this is not it. And she, I never got a response from her. And it was crazy to me because my mom had went to the doctor the day before and she told me that they told her everything about her was fine. No diabetes, no high blood pressure, no anything. And she went into a diabetic coma in her sleep that night. And I remember sitting at the end of the road waiting on the ambulance to come. And I was because I, I stayed back in the woods. So I had to go sit out there in the car and let them know. This is the place to come to because GPS won't be it like that back then. They were still using the little road maps. Y'all yeah, know them things I'm talking about. And so I was like, what is really going on? And I remember thinking in my head, she's, she's gone. Like, what are you going to do? And from that moment, I realized that my life would have to be whatever I could make of it. And I think that was important to me because... I started to dream big because I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know whether I was going to still go to college. I didn't know if I was going to finish high school. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't have any guidance anymore. My parents were gone and I still had great family support and things like that. But it's nothing like the love of your parents being a young black boy growing up in Alabama and already knowing that, you know, I'm a little gay, you know, so. <laughs> I'm like, you see how I dropped that laugh in there before it got a little too deep? Yes, God. <laughs> but no, seriously. So I went and I went on through school and did what I needed to do and graduated. I went to university and I had big dreams there and they came true. I had my own modeling troupe. Like I was still, still him, like still finding a way to show up and be present and chase those dreams and i remember my first big dream i chased was trying to transfer from troy university to the university of alabama with a 1.9 gpa my god today Ooh, that was a big one but i said you know 
God, you really worked that out. Because I don't know how you even let that slide. But <laughs> so that happened. And I was like, all right, you know, I guess he messed with me a little bit. So I started to, I started dreaming of modeling troop. I did that. I started dreaming of all these big things. And they started to happen and I will never forget uh, my graduation day from the University of Alabama. I was so sad because I'm sitting here. I remember sitting in the stadium looking around at everybody on the phone with their parents like waving to try to find them. And that was not my story. Um, and I remember my best friend who stays in Alabama, she wrote me a card. And so I knew that me and the girls was going out that night. So I'm trying to rush home and get that money out of that card because I know she had money at the time. So she done gave me at least a hundred. So I'm taking that to the bar. And I remember opening my apartment door and the card said, I'm so proud of you. I can't wait to see you on TV one day. And I literally stopped at my door and I said, wow, she believes that's going to happen. I don't know how that's going to happen. So I moved to D.C. with $1,000 in my account, and I slept on my best friend's couch, on his leather couch. Oh, from July to October, y'all. My God. Oh, my God. It was, it was, it was, it was terrible, but I said, I'm going to have this $1,000 in my account, and I'm going to wait till that refund drop, and I'm going to try. I, I don't know what's going on, but all I can do is try. And so I think that's when a lot of my D.C. people started to find out who I was. I changed my name to Frank in the City. I started, I remember my, the first time I got asked to do something in New York Fashion Week, baby. I told all my friends, I said, I don't know what y'all got going on, but this it. This it. They about to see who I am. And I don't, I feel like some of y'all was probably in the room. I went up there and ate that thing up, okay? And everybody was like, oh, wow, you're so comfortable doing this. And I was like, because I'm supposed to be here. I've been was supposed to be here. And I think even fast forward to now, this feels normal to me because I knew where I would be. I just didn't know the way. And I think sometimes when we start to dream, we start to want to know the way. And sometimes you're, if you can know the way, the dream is not big enough. If you know exactly how to roadmap it and get to it, you're, it's too big. It's too small, baby. It has to be bigger. It has to be something that you're like, wow. So one day I remember the first episode of The Circle came out and I said, oh, these girls are playing a social media game. Y'all need to sign me up. How did y'all even get on this show? Where are the people? So I'm still this small town boy from Alabama. I don't know how to get on TV. And so I literally just kept talking about it. And then season two came out and I was like, now, hold on. Y'all done did another series and the people still haven't called me. So I'm tweeting about all this way back in the day. And so one day I was, I was scrolling and I was telling my best friend, I was like, they're, they're high, they are looking for people for this new season. I started pitching the people. I done found the Studio Lambert page where they produce the show. I done sent them a video of me talking about, hey, I think I would be a good fit for this show. They ain't never read that. Never. And so I'm just sitting there like, well, really, I don't really know what to do. I'm driving, driving one day. And I said, that show is still in, on my mind. Like it's on my heart heavy. And I found the application while I was driving. I shouldn't have been driving and scrolling on Instagram. But my God, my God. And I literally put, I started the application and baby, that thing was long. And it was about two weeks later. And my friend was like, did you finish that application? And I was like, girl, I'm going to sit down and do it today. It's so long. She was like, well, you need to do it. Like, you need to stop putting it off. And I got to work that day. And I could not do any work at that school social work job. I was just sitting there like, OK, well, I'm scrolling on my phone anyway. Let me finish this application. I submitted the application at 12 p.m. The people sent me a text at 2 p.m. and said, hey, we just saw your application. We really like you. When can you meet? And I said, that's why I kept being on my mind. And so even getting to that dream was a hurdle. I had to quit my job because them people would not let me off. They would not let me off. And I'm like, now I have worked in my entire life to get to this job. That was my dream job. You can ask my friends standing right there when we sat up in the auditorium and they said, what do you want to be? I said, a school social worker. Wow, I knew that's what I wanted to be. So I'm like, am I having to throw this away to chase this dream? And I threw it away. I threw it away. And then next thing you know, my, grand my grandfather passed. 
And it became a situation of it's either you're going home to his funeral or you're going to the circle. And I literally sat in my living room and I sobbed. I said, God, if you are trying to get me to this place, why are you presenting me so many hardships on the way? And he told me to just continue to trust and ask what would your grandfather, what would the people that you have lost along the way want you to do? And I kept hearing the, my grandparents saying, we've lived our life, baby. You got to live yours. And so I went over to the circle and I brought out my little green book because I want to show you all the power of speaking things into existence and that can happen. When I got to the circle, I, um, we went to Manchester, UK, and my friend had to drop me off at the airport. And he looked at me, he said, all right, don't come back if you can. Because I don't know, because I done exhausted my account going over there, baby. And she, friend, that could not be here today. Um, but he paid all my bills while I was gone. So shout out to my girl. <laughs> okay. Um, and so I went over there and I started journaling. And if you see like it's pages of like just me journaling, I journal every single day I was there. And the thing I started to do, I think the second day I wrote in this journal, I said, um, I am a winner. I can win this. I will win this. I have already won this. God has already declared victory. I'm just here to collect my prize. God, you're mighty and your blessings are plenty. And I wrote that at the, I wrote every day and I wrote that at the end. Every single day. Every single day. We could not talk to people. And I wrote it every single day. And the more I wrote it, the more I started to be like, I might be on to something. Because, baby, these po these people, no shade to my castmates, but, baby, they weren't touching me, baby. They weren't touching me. Baby, that first thing came around and they said I was an influencer. And I said, oh, my God, that is not the game plan I had. I told all my friends, I'm going in there and I'm going to be, you know, real quiet. I'm going to lay it low because I know I got a big personality and people are going to like me. But I don't want to put my foot on the gas too much. Baby, I got up in there and started talking to everybody, the child. They was like, who do you want to talk to next? Who want to talk to me? I want to talk. And so that thing flipped around and I said, oh my God, not influencer first. Because you know that, that they put a target on people like that. The people that are the first influencers first never win the game until God's favor. So in, in that, I was, I said, okay, we got a little steam. And I did not place the second time uh i i think i came in third i found out later that i came in third and after that baby i didn't see the bottom ever i was in the top every single time at the top of the game every single time secret super influencer i was just like they're not gonna knock me off my track they're not they can't touch me and I don't even know what's carrying me. And my dream was carrying me because I had already sold the seeds. I was already speaking out loud what I was going to be. Every single person I met from the time I got to that airport in Manchester, I told them, I said, hey, I'm here to win the circle. I'm here for season four of the circle. I'm here to win. I was telling every single person I met down to the psychologist. She looked at me. She said, yeah, baby, but, you know, everybody comes here with that mindset. So I don't want you to be too disappointed if the outcome doesn't happen your way because everybody can't win. I said, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I'm letting you know, baby, I came to win. And I'm letting, I don't know what, I don't know what this, I don't know these people, but I'm letting you know what I came to do. And so that's why I said the money is already mine. It's in my bank account. And it came on right onto my bank account. And I'm just so grateful because that was, I started to make people there believe that I could win because they were watching me. The producers told me at the end of the game, they said, we've never seen anything like it because people were trying to get you out. And it's like, they would get blocked, 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 blocked. And they couldn't touch you. And we had never seen anything like it. Everybody was like, is this guy really going to pull it off? And look at God. And, you know, fast forward to that propelled me into quitting my job and, you know, getting all these wonderful opportunities to sit before you and have moments like this. And I wanted to share how, you know, even getting here from there still was not easy. You know, me being in my, my beautiful home now, shout out to Three Collective, um, 
that was a dream. I literally said, God, I create great content. What if an apartment complex said they want to hire me to create content? It start to happen. I literally said, God, I want to be aligned with the fitness brand. It started to happen. And when I was at my lowest, I had management this year, y'all. This last year was very, very hard for me um, because I, told, I was told to quit my job as an assignment. And the assignment was not going the way that I intended for it to go. And I started to get confused. And I started to ask God, I said, why would you tell me to quit my job if nobody was going to be calling me, baby? Why would you tell me that? And I started to think like, no, I know you told me to quit my job. I know you told me to keep chasing my dream, even though I had no way to get there. I didn't have a blueprint. I, just because I was on TV, that gas runs out quick. But my gas didn't run out. And I literally kept saying, God, what is happening? And I remember the first time it had been months. I hadn't gotten a new deal. I think I had two new deals last month. And I started to think about what company had kept me, you know, in their, in their minds. They took care of me and baby John takes care of me. So baby, when y'all see me in them job, listen, when y'all see John, y'all go to like, comment, subscribe, all those things. Because John said, oh baby, we're going to keep you employed because it's something about you that people likes. And I remember I had had no deal, no deal, no deal. I probably got approached last year for almost $75,000 of opportunities and I did not get any one of them. I would get almost to the finish line. They'd be like, eh, nah, we're not going to, we're going to go with somebody else. And I was like, well, God, every time I keep thinking like, it's going to be a break, it's going to be a break. You take it from me. What is that? And I said, I don't know. I, at that point, I said, all I can do is just keep going. And I started to tell myself, wake up and get through the day wake up and get through the day and then i started to realize one day i was like okay well i done made it a week like i'm not in a rut and i remember when the baltimore ravens opportunity came across my board and i was like y'all want to highlight me on the jumbotron for a show i did almost two years ago what and i started to think and then the color purple opportunity happened where i mean not color purple me going to the oprah thing the portrait gallery and that meant a lot for me because i was in such a, a rut and i was like you're oprah's like right there like you can touch her and i thought about like the color purple and how the movie had came out i started to think about baltimore ravens and how their colors are purple and i was like your mom is about to guide you She's guiding you because her favorite color was purple. And I was like, John, that's the color purple. She kept you with just enough of what you needed. She dropped the seeds. She kept you afloat and she walked with you. And I sat in a rut all the end of last year thinking that January was going to be so dry because all my content creator girlies know that's when the kids are getting that budget right. They got to see what, what, what the coins they got. And I'm literally, I remember telling my friend, I was like, girl, I just need one good deal. One good deal. So that when January come, I'm going to be, I'm going to be set. And baby, January has been my busiest month since I started this. I can't keep them out my emails. Won't he do it? And so I wanted to tell that story because I think it was important for you all to understand what I got through to get here and see that if I, despite everything I went through, can still come up with big dreams, I have huge dreams that still have not even happened. And there are some things gonna happen for me that I haven't even thought of. And I think that's really important to me because if I haven't thought of it, baby, wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I think I wanted to just share that story because a lot of people see the get about that bed they see the fragrances, they see the fashions, but there's a story behind how I show up. And my good sister told me, she said, you realize that people that have went through not even half of what you went through don't show up as half as good as you do to other people. She said, that's your superpower. And I said, wow, you a smart girl. <laughs> so I'm going to answer some questions now because I know that I will sit up here and talk all night long and I want to answer y'all's questions, but, but I wanted to give a little background um, and hopefully give you all the opportunity to answer or ask me any questions as well. Thank you, child, because I be thinking I could talk so loud. How are we with time? Can I just 
just invite them to come take a seat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on in. Come on. The crowd and is she going to be in the bed. The That's probably why they lay. They don't get out of the bed when I tell them. I want to see your beautiful How about that? How y'all feeling? You need a seat? It's you need a seat? You good? Is it, on, is it another seat over there? This one, um, I think it's him. You want this one? Oh, it's one right there. We all set. Y'all feeling good? Y'all feeling all right? Okay. Uh, so I'm only going to answer a few of these questions because um, I want to get a chance to mingle, take pictures with you all. Um, one of these questions says, how do you take a leap of faith and switch careers? Child, that is the scariest thing I have ever done. I do not actually recommend it. <laughs> uh, listen, if you want to, out of all of those things that I just told y'all I went through, Doing this is the hardest thing I have ever experienced. And someone was speaking on Sunday on a sermon I was watching, and he talked about every remarkable thing that I got to came on the other side, some things I never want to go through again. And I said, that's amazing because where I am right now, the way I wake up and roll out of bed when I want to, and I don't have to, if I want to go to New York tomorrow or right now, I can. That is a freedom that I never thought I would experience at this age. Like it was something I thought would happen, but I didn't know it would be like this. So if that's something that whoever asked the question, if you are thinking about switching careers, I'm a big component of I'm not going to be scared because the only thing that stops you from getting anywhere in life is fear. And I know that on the other side of fear, there's faith. And so I will do anything I got to do. I will try anything once, baby. But trust and believe, I definitely put in about 20 job applications because I was going back to work. And baby, all them people said, uh, sorry, we have chosen another candidate. And I kept saying, well, what, 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 what do you want me to do? You was not going to help me. But, you know, we are moving. We are moving. Uh, another question says, how do you fight imposter syndrome? Um, I have a good village around me. I have a great support system y'all big me up all the time and let me know that i'm the hottest thing walking and i really appreciate that because sometimes it does get scary even you know being back there i was like wow these people are coming here to see me and yeah they are and i think that is just a testament like you have to push through it and you have to just allow yourself to relish in the person that you become and how you created yourself to be an amazing person uh, let's see. What gave you the strength to surrender to your dreams? Um, I think I started to live a better life when I stopped wanting to have control. Uh, having control was something that was really important to me because I want to know what what's happening, what kind of money we got coming in, what opportunities are coming, and it's like you have no control because you have to really surrender to everything. So that's why I throw out I throw out dreams and I don't focus on. Money. I throw out dreams and I keep moving. I keep, I wake up every day and I say, all right, another chance to try something different, try something new. And I just keep going and I don't stop. And I don't think it's a rhyme or reason to dreaming. I think you have to just say things and believe them wholeheartedly. Say them over and over again until you actually start to believe them. I have been saying recently that I'm going to be an Emmy, Emmy winner, not Emmy nominated, but an Emmy winner. And I know that that's going to happen. I don't know how to get that child, but I know that I'm on my way. I know that I will be hosting shows. I know that this is just the start of what could be. I know that I'm going to be on your mainstream TVs on commercials very, very soon. I know that those things are happening. I don't know the way. I don't fixate on them every day. I just put them out to the atmosphere and I believe 1,000. There is nothing that any of you can tell me that's make me think I would never win an Emmy. Just like when I put on the clothes and walk across the street, there's not a soul. Let me tell y'all something. When I strut across that street, there is nothing anybody could tell me. Everybody in here could hate my outfit and I would not care. Because if I'm pumping across the street, that means I love it so much. And that you gotta you gotta live in a little delulu. You gotta really understand that 
You can have anything. It could be big. You can say you want a mansion, but that doesn't mean every single day you wake up and you're thinking about, oh, how am I going to get to this mansion? How am I going to get there? No, just dream. Just dream and really believe that they, that it can happen. I think sometimes people, because they have said that they wanted things to happen and they don't happen, they stop dreaming. It just wasn't meant for that to happen right in that moment. God already knew that I was going to get here and be sitting here with this mic and not know what I was going to say. But I surrendered to the idea that he was going to provide me with every single bit of knowledge I needed to talk. And I think I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> uh, let's see. Are we good on time? Okay. Let's see. What is your number one factor when it comes to dreaming big? Uh, my number one factor is if it's not so big that it absolutely frightens you and terrifies you, then it's not big enough, babe. If you can say, oh, my God, I want to be a, uh, a welder and you know that you can go to a welding school, you know, that can be a dream, but you can find the tangible steps to get there. You got to dream big. Like I never knew how in the world I was going to get on the circle, but I dream big and it happens. So you have to think of things that are kind of crazy and kind of big. Mike Todd always talks about crazy faith. And I think that that truly changed my mindset around having faith and whatever is supposed to happen will always happen. There's never any opportunity that is for me that will ever miss me ever. And you have to be okay with that because that may mean that every that doesn't mean everything you want is going to happen. There are going to be some things that you absolutely want and they are not going to happen. And it's not for you. And I think you have to be okay with that because if it's a no now, it means that something bigger is coming. Something bigger is already always on the other side. Uh, where do you, what do you say to yourself when you feel small or like your dreams are out of reach? Uh, like I said earlier, I don't think about the dreams. I put them out into the atmosphere. I tell y'all the dreams because I start to say things out loud. So when I'm on my way there, you all believe me. I believe that all of you in this room know for a fact that I will be an Emmy winner. And I know that because I have put that out there to you all. And now I'm going to keep talking about it until I get there. So when I get there and I'm up there with my Emmy like this, y'all going to be like, there he go. He said. He said it, and that's how it's supposed to be. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I may not. Look at Tabitha Brown. Yeah. What? You have all these examples around you of people that dream big. Tabitha Brown turned on her phone and started talking about a, a rap from Whole Foods. And she's an Emmy winner with all these books out. She didn't know how to get there. She knew she wanted to be there, but she didn't know the way. And I think you see success when you surrender. Um, okay, one more off the call and I'm gonna let you all ask some. Um, what is your definition of dreaming big? Uh, the definition of dreaming big that I will leave you all with as my last question is do things that scare you, do things that seem unimaginable, try. Try, try, try to think of something because uh, we're about to do an activity soon. So start to tell your minds what is something that you really want to happen for yourself that you don't really know how to get there, but you would love for that to be a thing and really think about it and really say, what is something tonight? that before I leave here, I want to put out into the universe and I want it to happen for me. And I want you all to, when you write it down or whatever it is that you do, I want you to put faith behind that and really believe it. And I want y'all to like really not think about it anymore after you leave here, put it out there and keep living your regular life. And if it's supposed to happen for you, it will happen. And if it does not happen, something better is going to happen for you. Cause I told myself that I wanted a one bedroom apartment uh, and that I was going to be fine with that. And God said, no, bigger. So my thing didn't happen, but something bigger happened. So we have to surrender to the idea of knowing that just because you dream something, it may not happen how you want it to happen, but it will happen in a way that is bigger than you can imagine. And I think I summed it up real good. Come on, fucking city. <laughs> okay. I think we're going to go into the,
meditation now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah.